Which kind of lectures you want to hear? Uh, somebody, uh, you, I don't know which guy, but somebody told me how was our understanding of this relation of public and private, you know, and this was uh, in, uh, in, in uh, social housing, uh, in very early stages. And then I decided myself to, to show you uh, projects uh, which I built, or some of the projects I built in uh, between 1979 and 1983. During this time, I was a little bit younger, and uh, I was a student like you. And at the university, I had this idea that architecture is not useful for myself, for me. I, I, I wanted to do, to be involved in construction, but uh, I thought this profession as an architect has no future, especially for me as a person. I was very glad that I met uh, in Vienna another uh, a friend of mine uh, called Marcus, and we. I was studying at the Technical University, he was studying at the Academy of Fine Arts in Vienna, but we both had the same feelings that we did not trust architecture. And uh, we had the feeling we should do something, we want to do something for the people where we come from. And uh, we were raised in a very small village, you know, I told you, I told you already. With about 300 people, very, un and we, we asked ourselves, how can we contribute something to their lives by our knowledge? And you know, therefore, I, I call this cheap, stupid, and simple, because uh, why had it to be cheap? Because, and I think not only in Spain but all over Europe, that there is always a relation between the income of people and the price they pay for housing. You know, th this is the, the critical relation. You know. And every, pro every percentage you can lower the price for housing, the freedom of people will become bigger because they can decide much more. What do they do with their income? What do they do with their money and things like this? And therefore, we have this idea that architecture has to be much cheaper. And th when we speak about cheap, it means that we had the dream we could do a house or an apartment or something like this, half the price of a regular apartment which was built during these times. So we knew this would really be a big progress for these people because then their life, they can start to plan their life in a very different way. So everything was cheap. So we, we, we focused very much, how can you do a cheap building? You know? and, and without, uh, but sure, at a certain level of comfort. The second, why do I call it stupid? It's also <coughs> right here. When you're a student, your background of knowledge is limited. In relation to what we know nowadays, there, our, our knowledge was very, very limited, and uh, I, I would call myself stupid then, and, and we would call ourselves stupid in the sense that we, the, the, we had not as much knowledge uh, which, as we have today, but uh, that's very natural, uh, but uh, as we think, and why did everything has to be simple? Because when we wanted to reduce the cost of the building, we asked ourselves, what are the resources we have? First resource is very clear, you always need land. You know, you need a piece of land and uh, where you can put the things. Second uh, resource, uh, which is very, you need the material. Uh, because, uh, the, okay, you cannot build a house, without, maybe, maybe in the future times, but not now, but uh, you cannot build houses. So we decided very early 
that when we want to do cheap houses, we have to do them in wood. Wood is normally an expensive material, but when wood has one very big advantage, it's a very simple material to, uh, to use it for normal people, you know, because they can handle the tools, the tree, you know, the, 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 uh, a hammer and a knife and uh, uh, a saw and things. So people can work with wood in a very, very simple way. And for us, the biggest resource when we, that we spoke about housing then was that we said we need the time, the free time of one year from the people to work on their own house. So the idea was always that together with us, we should make it possible that people can build their own houses, but in a quite a short time frame, normally from spring to autumn. So they needed one holiday and they needed Saturdays and their free time to work, uh, to build their own house. It, it is very simple. And, you know, therefore, when you have this idea that people should do the things themselves, you need very, uh, very, very simple uh, technologies because you cannot train the people, you know, they, they have to, everything has to be thought that simple that people were able to be, to make themselves, you know. And uh, so these are the three things what we were thinking about, you know. So we had this feeling when we can do cheap things and uh, that they are a little bit so nice, uh, people could really increase the quality of their living. Simple they had to be because we wanted to use the time of the people that together with them we can do a house. And uh, the, the, the another background of being cheap was that we wanted to use the land as efficient as possible. So therefore we did, in the beginning we did not build uh, one family houses, but we built, built groups of houses. So for you would call them small communities. Uh, and uh, okay, I go on. The the first one, and this project. Oh, sorry. Here, 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 here. I have to switch on somewhere. Yes. Ah, yes, now it works. <laughs> okay. You you know this. Uh, the, the, I, we always believe in the same thing. The goal was here very simple, you know, how to satisfy the needs of normal people in the most efficient way. This was the big question. And you know all the things you have to consider about it. That's the individual well-being, that's the environmental impact, that's the social development of the societies in which you live. And now, when you would try to read this, how to make this, you have to cheap in, in more complicated. It's a lot of argument. You know, the one in which we are talking about the volume in relation to the built environment, the optimized use of the square meters per capita, uh, the traffic and the infrastructure, uh, then the, the public spaces and the greenery. The lo you always have to consider about the local traditions because they are always the cheapest, you know, when you want to build something cheap in, I don't know, in Andalusia, it doesn't matter where, you go there and you see, you look how, what, what do the, the companies, what kind of knowledge do they have, that's always the cheapest, you know? don't invent anything, only discover the thing, and, so, okay, so, the social, accept, it is very important. And I, I don't want to, to follow this, you know, but there you have a lot of arguments when you take this verse, what you have to think about, you know. Uh, so what I want to show you, there are two other very big ideas during this time which were important uh, for us. And this image represents an idea, you know, and the idea is very simple, do things together. Do things together. Don't do it alone, but work together. And therefore, maybe you see me on this image, but it's better that you don't see me, but I'm also somewhere on this image, you know? And uh, this, is, this was my friend, 
uh, Marcus. He uh, uh, and uh, yes, and these were some parts of the families. And uh, now, so we try to organize a group. You know, some people would live in these areas, and then on the right hand, in the background, you see this is the the, the, the structural idea. What is so the first is idea what is very important for us, do things together. Don't do it alone. Organize people and then use their time frames they have for doing I for the I really have to apologize, but I did not show these images and these lectures for more than twenty years, you know. So this is really very old. Mm -hmm. huh? And you know so but doing things together is very simple. You know, for those who are interested in, in structural questions, it's also very simple. All the, we, we developed a typology of, wo of massive wood buildings, not laminated wood buildings, oh. massive wood. Because massive wood is much cheaper than laminated wood. And therefore, every 3 meter and 60, there is one beam, 14 by 14. And then you have the big uh, beams over here, there's a, the, the, a column over here, there's a, a beam over here, and there are beams over here. This beam, the span, the 360, is 8 by 22. And the other beams, 8 by 18. So when you calculate all this, it's very clear, all the walls in the building are 8, all the doors are 76, all the windows are 76, or uh, stairs are 76. So it's everything modulated to one system of uh, coordination between different. And you know, when you build this wood, wood forces you very much, you know, to be very precise because you only have one try. When you put the wall in the wrong position, it's gone. So it, it's, it's all about Coordination. It's all about coordination. I, I don't want to talk in detail uh, about these things. Now, the second is, you know, that what I told you before. All the things have to be simple. And therefore, this was the workshop what we built first in this area that the people can use the workshop to build their houses. And uh, the, 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 the story of this, this workshop photo, what you see now, is uh, I think it's only two or three years ago. So it's, but it's still in use. And that's very funny, it's still in use. And you know, okay, when, okay, it doesn't matter. When, when I, when, during my studies, together with Marcus, my friend from the academy, we went to Iran, to Tehran because we, we were not interested in our studies. So we, we this, but there we got, uh, we earned a lot of money because we were town planners in Iran. And we, and we did project in Tabriz and in Aramico and then in Tehran and, and things like that. I don't know why, but uh, they always tried to persuade us to stay there by paying us every month more money. And we really earned a lot of money. And then, with, with this money, we came back. And uh, uh, a carpenter died. And we bought the workshop of this carpenter, not knowing from what we will use it. But we were both believing that our future has something to do with craftsmanship. And to have a, a nice equipment was something we so we did, it. and it's still there. That's the, for me. It's always funny when I go there. I always go to the workshop and see is the things are, are the things still there. Very funny, you know? but I'm not that often there. Really so maybe every three years. Or something. So and the second now, and that's the, the the reason why we try to why I talked about this. For us, it was very clear then that. There should be a public space, but uh, now when I speak about public space nowadays, I always speak about this relation to public outside. But there should be a public spaces 
for the people who live there. And according to our climate, there should be covered public spaces, very big covered public spaces, which people can use uh, together. Normally, the entrances, the workshop, the infrastructure, everything is related to this public space. And you see children like this. And, and you know, one of the most nice experience about this kind of public spaces is that children from all over the, uh, the village, they come there because they can play on a covered area. It doesn't matter if it's raining or snowing or anything. And uh, they use, you see, it's, made, it's quite a lot used by children. Mm -hmm. And you know, it, you see, everything is done very, very simple, very direct, you know. So everything had to be uh, very, very cheap. So, you know, during this time, that, so I, I told you the first thing is that we were very much believing in, in doing things together as, as a group, sec to support each other. Second very big idea is we were very much focusing on the craftsmanship, on the way how you do things. And nowadays we call this technology. Things like this. And the third idea is also very important, is that we were very much, we, we already believed then in a lot of ecological arguments to reduce the maintenance cost of buildings, to reduce the the price uh, for maintenance, you know, the heating cost and things like this. So we were focusing very much on a lot of insulation. I, I don't want to do, explain you in detail, but I could do what... <coughs> and they, they are uh, quite... Uh, nowadays it, it looks like this, you know, the plants are growing, they move in. And, uh, uh, and you see the... the, 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 uh, the the wood is already brown, and when you, you see now, there are two windows there. You know how big is the window? 76. Two windows, 152. <laughs> Everything is caught And you see, it's funny, it's funny. And you see, that's okay, that's okay. And this uh, is from the back, and we always had a lot of terraces in between, and there's always a connection from the terraces going down to the greenery, so that uh, even if the house is one level higher, you know, you have this outdoor connection to the outside and to the inside, you know, and yes, uh, that's how it looks. You see, it's still there, in, in, and the, the, the first room in the whole development, this room, is the workshop. You see here the wooden columns I told you before, and then we, down here we only put bricks you know, between, like a, 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 it's a, like a strategy in the medieval, you know, where you have the brick uh, structures and then you put materials into these things. And, uh, the houses are quite uh, big, so one house is 720 by 1080, which means it's about uh, 70 to 75 square meters on one level. And then you have two levels of this, and they are quite big houses. But you can imagine that they are extremely cheap. Yeah. And it, it, it's, uh, you, you would not believe how uh, when I would When you would calculate it nowadays in euros, the price is about 42,000 euros. And, and this was only 1970. Uh, this project uh, we did uh, in, in the year 79. We started in spring and we moved in in uh, autumn. And uh, this project became very, very uh, famous in Europe because it was very strange, first of all, that architects built, not developers built. Second, that it was done in wood which during this time did not exist in Europe anymore. Uh, third, that uh, uh, people organized themselves. So when, when we, in all big, not architectural magazines, in all big ma public media magazines, this project was short. Because it's, it was such a strange story during this time. You know, it was out of everything comparable during this time. And so we, it was also there in TV for over one hour. Was a, a, a 
eternal TV, uh, a movie about uh, what, what's going on. Very strange. <coughs> so this was very funny after this movie. And, uh, we became more than 400 letters from all over Europe, from people who asked us, do you want, uh, we want you to do something like this for us. And we were too stupid, and so we only wrote one letter that I'm really, we are really sorry, even we are very pleased that you like the thing, but we are too stupid to be able to do this thing all over Europe. So we said, no, we cannot do it. It's not serious when we say, yes, we will do it. No, we did And so we, in our surrounding, in the area we lived, uh, there a lot of people came to us and asked us to develop you know, something, uh, something uh, strange. And so, uh, for, for example, this guy, he was a young artist having absolutely no money. Really no But he had an area and he had a little bit of wood. And she said, please, can, why can't we not? He, I will do it with my family and you show, show me how to do and things like this. And then the, uh, this is his house. He's still living there. It's more than 30, uh, 37 years old now. And uh, you know, the right part is the atelier and the left part is uh, the living area and you see we were thinking about everything how to do the foundation as cheap as possible only by stone how to do the structure how to do the okay that's and you know you can imagine how big is the window 76 <laughs> there is <laughs> it's uh, everything is according to the structural grid of these uh, houses this is the artist, it's his atelier, and this image is from last year, and uh, he does something which I like a lot. You see, the, he's, he, he's collecting stones, and then make the stones big, and then he's hanging stones all over uh, galleries and things like this, and I like very much these flying stones. Uh, in in, uh, in in a lot of uh, uh, spaces. That's his, uh, and, and uh, yeah, that's his uh, atelier where we were. He's on it. He but that's okay. And you see, this is the opening when you come into the building. Right is the atelier left. And you see, I I don't I, I but you, you see this material. That's for normally you you use this material to uh, for small animals, mm. you know. And so we, we were thinking about every small thing, you know, to 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 invest as less money as possible. You know? And it's not. And during this time, the the the, the clients they don't pay us as architects, but they paid us for our working as craftsmen. So in winter we were drawing a little bit and in summer we were starting we were we lived on the on the on the construction sites and then we were the, we were doing buildings, you know. And uh, yes and, and everybody was doing this. And you know so we invented how to do a door, how to do a window, how to do a wall and uh, because Everything which was normal was too expensive. So when you see a window, we thought, how can we make the window cheap? Very simple question. But so you can, you can work on this very cheap, simple question on everything. You know, you always find a solution to make the things more. If you like, if you don't like, you don't have to. It's not necessary. You know, I only wanted to say this was a little bit of our strategy, how we develop. Uh, our approach towards architecture, you know, to make, and I think they still look nice, you know, it's a, it's a, a very, yes, I, I can show you some others. Yeah, that's the, you see, that's the part of the, uh, the and you see, that's for example something I'm very proud of. I invented sliding doors uh, uh, with, a with a technique which is so simple. You normally use the hinges for 
clothes in baskets. And I, I, I tried to do, I, we invented this for, for sliding doors. But you see, now this, this image is, they are now, you see here, up here. Yeah. And, and you know, they are very, very cheap. Yeah. <laughs> they are 40 years old now. And they still work, which is very strange. If I for me, for myself, yeah. Yeah, this is very strange. Okay, this is the artist, this is the guy uh, at the entrance. Okay, now I show you something. Then more, I told you more and more people came, and, and especially uh, what is very important for me is when you really look, there are a lot of groups in our society who don't have a lot of money. Teachers and officials, sometimes in public administration. But there's also a group who has very simple jobs or is very bad educated. And for them, for this group of people, the, 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 the surface of the building is much more important than for a teacher. A teacher, he says, I don't need a better surface. He can use rough stone or rough uh, wood. But for a really poor guy, that's a big problem because through his, through his buildings where he's living or through his cars, they want to reach a kind of social emancipation in a society. For the real poor people, it's not able to say, I don't need a, a, a nice treatment because everybody would tell him, you cannot afford. For a teacher, it's easy. He's an intellectual. If, if he cannot afford, nobody will tell him that he cannot afford. You know, for, so for real, uh, uh, real poor people, the surface and the, 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 the expression of a building it's something very important for doing his social emancipation. You know, in, in, I think in, in our society we have a very simple movement that every social group is looking to the next higher social group and uses the, the, state, the, state, uh, the standards, uses the, the uh, sorry, uh, uses the, the, the small hinges to try to, to see himself as being a part of the next higher social group. It's a very complicated process, but therefore the, the, the form, the service, that has an own importance, not only in relation to if it's architectural nice or not, it has a big social impact. You know, which kind of people use uh, which kind of uh, forms, shapes, materials, and things like this. You know? That's also maybe you ever saw in, 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 in a lot of society that uh, some social uh, groups, uh, for example, uh, Turkish immigrants, you know, they are not here in Spain, but Austrian, Germany, Switzerland, they all just drive big cars, BMW, uh, BMW or Mercedes even if they cannot afford. But it is so important for them to show that they are part of this society. And so in housing, it's the same problem. That the people, how they live, you know, it's very much related to the social level they live in, but they never want to express this social level. They only always want to adapt the values and the, the images of the next higher social level where they would be, like to be part of, you know. And therefore, for example, for this, therefore, you see, this house looks now white and it has plaster, which is more elegant, more noble than the rough uh, wooden uh, surface of the other house. But for them, this was very, 
Well, I, I know the group of people, you know, which live there. And you see, uh, that's a, then, uh, and that's a, a strategy, what we use a lot of times to find a way how we can do these public areas, which I really appreciate. That, that, the other the people who live there should have some public spaces, you know, but indoor public spaces. And you know, maybe this typology in, in, in European uh, architectural history in the 19th end of the 19th century, you had a typology of passages. You know, you, you use them for shopping malls and things like this. And I over, and there are some of them are very nice even until now. And I always like this typology of having two buildings and some covered areas in between. And that's what we used as a strategy quite a lot of time for doing uh, housing. You know, which is not where uh, afterwards, it, in, in the, in, in after 2000, it became quite favorable to do so. But this is. 20 years earlier, this is And you know, but you see here, this area is now quite clean, you know, and, and this is very, very well organized. And, uh, no, but this is a real, uh, this is a real simple solution. Therefore, you have to be very careful, you know, which kind of surfaces, which kind of materials, right? But it still looks nice, you know, and then we have. That's what we all did a lot of time. You see, this is the public space, and then there is another space which is determining now the the difference from inside and outside, uh, from out, uh, from the private to the public. You know, it's not one wall; it's a spatial solution. Uh, what we were talking about this morning a little bit when we, we saw the images uh, over there, and that's what we used. Okay, that's, but you know the. It, it's it's very funny when you see these things. You know, all these rooms are green inside. If you didn't do it, it's it's like this. And you see, they change by the time. And then you see a little bit. You see these things. Huh? You you understand? That's this this strong will of of emancipation. You know, the, the organize something private to have the fence or something. Even if it is very small, very strange phenomenon. And you know, sometimes, you know, this is a, we also do some, you know, with this strategy, when you tell people you can do a house half the price than anybody else, you will have a lot to do. Very easy, you know. And sometimes you can do nice houses. So, you know, and this is, you see, for example, this is one. Th th there you have the, the building, and then you have a big glass uh, veranda outside of the building, managing this uh, inside outside problem and the fuels and the things like this. So, and this is an old image out of uh, quite a uh, summer of the 80s. And then inside, you know, it's also romantic, you know, there's a, a rock and then the rock comes into the house and uh, it's, it's, uh, then you can put a little bit plants into it. You know, it's, it's, you see. Uh, it's, it's, a, a, it, it's quite an a easy way how to do this. And then you see once more when you, when you, when you build this wood, that uh, you really have to think about the structure, you know, and then this square, the diagonal structure was, because the, all the, the, the layout is divided into four areas, you know, and in the middle is the, the temperature, it's the oven, you know, it's very, it's, it's very basic, you know, so, and all around then is the second level of Amazing. And then you see the people become richer, and then you do a first edition, then you do a second edition <laughs> in the back. <laughs> but that's okay, you know. And then you see you generate a nice area between the different areas where they can. But that's that's uh, that's what I, I really can say. I, I have some buildings where I did five editions since 30 years. They come back and they say, "Oh, we have, we need a little, maybe, maybe uh, it doesn't matter what we need, but they need something, or they have in mind that they need something, and then they come back and we do uh, uh, something uh, uh, like this. And that's the view uh, from this side. And you see, that's uh, 
Yeah, that's the area, the Rhine Valley, that's the Rhine, that's the Swiss mountains over there, the Austrian mountains are on the left side. And you see down there, these are the traditional farmhouses. And you see now what is very common in our area, that there is a, a lot of uh, what you would call ambitious modern architecture. You know? When you travel nowadays through this area, this is the area in all over Europe where you have the highest amount of modern, ambitious architecture. You know, for, for people coming from Germany or from Switzerland, they're always astonished how this works in our area. You know? that in our area, people are really proud about architecture and they try to identify themselves with architecture. You know? so, so the majority of people, whenever they do something, this, they are living, they go to an architect. They don't go to a developer. And that's very, very different than in a lot of other areas in Europe uh, at this uh, moment. Yes, you see, this is now, this is, uh, we, we started to do something like this with a uh, uh, social housing company. You know, because according to law, when we wanted to make the things even more big, according to our tax system, then they rent the house for 10 years. They afterwards can buy the house without paying VAT. And this makes the house once more uh, about 17% cheaper. You know? And then we, we had this idea that uh, uh, the, 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 this, the, the, the social housing company we looked for all about uh, 30 families and we separated into three different groups. And uh, then you see a little bit, every group had uh, uh, built, his, every person built his own house. Every group built his own port. And every group also had a small building for their specific use. And all together, they have a bigger building where they can meet as a whole, uh, all the 30 families. All the three, mainly the small houses are mainly used for children or for kinder. And the, the big house, houses now is mainly used for birthdays, uh, ceremonies, uh, marriage, or it doesn't matter, or, or something. And you see, in, in origin, all this is uh, natural wood, but afterwards they wanted to, they colored, you know, and uh, it was very important that the, the red group and the blue group, <laughs> I don't know why they took these colors, you know, but that's, uh, okay. Now, this one looks like this when you walk in there today, and you know, it's, uh, you see, it's uh, very romantic. But, but as an entrance to a social housing, it's very strange. You know, yeah. And people sit out there, they have their chairs and uh, sit out there in these public spaces. You know. and, but you know, I, I told you that th these public spaces, and this was the basic starting point, these public spaces were then very much thought in relation to the social group. You know, not, not, so, not so much in relation to the uh, public outside. You know, the public was very much out what you would call nowadays semi-public, you know? It, it's so, but it's so very much determined uh, for these you know, groups. And you can see, the, the, this is the red one, I think. This one was the blue one, I don't know. Why. They decided themselves. And, and that's a little bit very important for my understanding, you know, that I do not want to determine how people have to live. I only want to open opportunities and the people should decide themselves how they organize them within the own house. For example, in this blue color, that's very funny, on the, on the left level you have a split level typology and on the right one you have plain houses, two, two and a half houses, things like this, and that's the right one. That's, uh, I think they are very relaxed atmospheres. That's what, and that's, that, that's what people appreciate a little bit. You know. That's everyday life. And so, then that's the same thread that you once more 
you see, that's the public, then you have this space to the private, and then inside there is the private, and what, how they, it looks in front of these uh, uh, areas, you know, that's a little bit what the people have to do. For me, it is important. I, uh, so, look, some of these atmospheres I don't like at all, some of them I like, but that's not important. For me, it is important that we can generate opportunities uh, for these people you know, to make this. And when you, when you, I think you can see, you can understand very easy when you go in inside the house. Sometimes uh, people have the kitchen to the garden. Sometimes the kitchen to over here. It doesn't matter. They are all different, you know. So I could not uh, draw you the layouts of all the. I can draw you if it's a split level or if it's not. I can draw you where is the position of the staircase. That's it. All the rest is determined uh, by the people. And you can imagine this is a lot of stress when you, as an architect, uh, organize a construction site like. That you have to support the people, that the people have to support each other, that you have to organize the material, that the delivery of the material is there at the right place and things like this. You know. So therefore then we, we when we did project like this, we had a contracts of about uh, 180 percent of fee for a normal architectural design. Because the the the, the supporting uh, role and the organization is much more difficult. It, 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 it needs much more time, etc. Yes, that's a little bit. Okay. You see, that's a, I've, I've been there with uh, collaborators of my company uh, last uh, summer, you know, and then the, the children, they, believe me, the children like these spaces a lot. Because they can, and, and I believe also that these spaces help a lot to educate children. Because when they stay in the apartment, they, they have a conflict. You have to solve the conflict. But in an area like this, instead of solving the conflict, children can live, and they are not out of social control. And this helps a lot. That a lot of conflicts not have to be solved. Or times. Time, you know, it's been solved to conflict. But it's not necessary that people arrange themselves. And uh, yes, I have been there, and then I have some drawings from children, and uh, uh, which they sent me uh, last year, where they say thank you for uh, creating this. Uh, and, and when you feel after 30 years that even the children of the next generation enjoys this a lot, you know. That you, have to feel that it is quite nice. What about winter? Is it? Is it's, it's winter, never under uh, about three degrees, three to five degrees, but not more lower. Because it, it's a it's a climate in between. You know, it's not that warm. It's not heated, but it's also not the outside. Climate. So that that's a uh, in between climate. And, uh, okay, that's a little bit what we. Now, at the end, I want to show you when we speak about pl public and private nowadays, we do something uh, very different, you know? Uh, areas like this, uh, that's in Innsbruck. And this is the biggest shopping mall of Tyrol. This is Ikea. That's an art. You know, you have these uh, really ugly areas all over Europe. At the moment, you know? All over Europe. But in Innsbruck, there's a specific situation that the city has not a lot of land to grow outside. You know? So at this moment, we were working on, <coughs> the, on the question, how can you use, because when you calculate these areas, there's only a lot of traffic, but it's not a lot of density. The densities of these big boxes are quite low. You know? So the question here was, how can we, this is a process which we started one year ago, and I think we go on for another one and a half year. How can we change an area like this into a well-organized uh, urban city? Which is very strange as a first time. 
But when you want to generate a city out of these ugly boxes, you have to generate public space. Yeah? And the, the, the public space is a question of which kind of ideas do you have for the, uh, the, the organization of the public. You know? And at the same time, <coughs> you can increase the use of the land in this area dramatically because these areas normally have one very big advantage that they are very well connected to the infrastructure. You know, they are very well connected to streets, they are normally very well supported by, uh, by public transportation because they need a lot of infrastructure because the frequency is, is quite high. And you see this, you see, you know all these areas in you know, every city. They are also impossible. See, it doesn't matter. And what we are now trying to do is, we, we are trying to make a city out of these stupid areas. And to make it, to give it to you, now. you see, over here we start now to generate public spaces, you know, a kind of boulevard at the center, then a relation to small spaces, then interaction to other, then the continuation of greenery, then an entrance square, and uh, it, it, so you see, we only, we only, as you know, we only speak about public build, a public organization of the public areas, and we want to increase the use of the land from 150,000 square meters now, built area above ground, to 450,000 square meters of built area. But in the end, also this one. Almost like every district in a city will have a certain identity for a certain district, you know. So it, it's more or less the group of people to, uh, with which we deal is much bigger. But the idea to build a public space for this big group of people is exactly the same, even if the, the public, the group which we were building before was much smaller. You understand? And uh, yeah, you can imagine that when you do a political discussion like this, that this is very complicated because the first issue you have to do is you have to, to make clear to everybody that in future this will be a mixed use area. Nowadays, a lot of these areas are monofunctional areas. But exactly this being monofunctional makes them so ugly, so dangerous sometimes in social terms, you know. And so you have to, to a lot of to, to urban planning regulations, you know, you have to change. Otherwise you cannot do something like this. But then you see, now you can start to to develop a district, you know. And uh, yes, uh, everybody feels much better uh, like this, you know. And you have to do a, you can imagine you have to solve a lot of problems with parking, you know, with uh, traffic, with, uh, um, I, I don't want to talk about it, you know, but it's a lot. You know. But I think these are the interesting areas at the moment, what we have in our societies, because when we are able to reorganize them much more to an urban, uh, atmosphere, and the key for this is what we were talking about in our design all the time. What is the relation of the public to the private? You know? How do you combine these two very uh, different things? I cannot tell you when I will be when we will finish this. You know, but uh, the, the process of this of uh, working and the process of political decision making is. <coughs> Uh, fine at the moment, and uh, we, we are trying. At this moment, we also do some different uh, studies in different sites about this opportunity to change this kind of uh, in, uh, periphery uh, uh, areas between industry and uh, and uh, commercial into urban cities, and the key is the same as for the small developments. How can you manage the relation of public to private? You know? How can you manage exactly these two very different values? You know? How do you 
bring them uh, together. That's the way it looks now. That's the way. <coughs> that's the way it looks. Now. <laughs> very interesting. But I like these questions. Very strange. Oh, one question: Are you integrating the IKEA, or it's so taken it's out? Sure. No, no, you cannot do. You cannot say no. Then, <laughs> if, when you when you kick them out, you you generate the same problem at another site. You know? So you have to you have to integrate all these big structures. You know? And that, that's exactly the problem, you know. When you only say go away, then it's easy, you know. But you know, you, see, you know these kind of areas. Uh, I can also show you in Spain a lot, of them, you know, a lot of. Them. And these are wasted areas because the infrastructure is very good in these areas. You know, it's about public transportation, it's about train connection, it's about highway connection, and so I think it is very reasonable to use them in a much better, much more comfortable way, you know. If the process for something you can imagine, there are so many interests and a lot of people. But it's always the same problem. You know? How bring you, how, you remember the first image? How do you bring the people together? And second, what do they want to have in common? It's about the public space. And, and so therefore it has some uh, similarity with what I showed you before and then you can start to design that's also nice. Okay, that's uh, only about that. But that's what we want to do, you know. We want to move it from here to here. And we believe when we are able to move it from here to here, it will be even much better. The quality of living will be much higher. In the 20th century, we were always believing when we reduce from here, even in this direction, it will become better. Now we should have learned, no, it's not this way, it's the other way to become better. That's a little bit. Okay, that's what I wanted to tell you about. Okay, now, uh, okay, that's the last one. But that's the last one. This is uh, a development in China. They yeah, have only rebuilt this area, it's very strange. Uh, it's uh, 20... Uh, one moment. 21. Yeah, it's Shishan 21, is the, uh, the area. No, it's about, I think, 18,000 apartments. And, you know, Chinese are a little bit strange. And uh, what, what is important in this, you know, we, you, you know, for you see these figures up there, this will never be built. You know what? Chinese don't move into an apartment not facing south. In China, in China there's only one direction possible facing us. So, and at the same time, they have a desire about public space. And the question is, how can you mix south orientation and public space? And organize, but for public space, you need walls. You know, if you don't have walls, they're very complicated. And you know, this is the, the figure of the public space leading through all this development. And they, they, we did something very strange, you see. All the big buildings are facing north-south and we started to develop three-story high connections between the north-south oriented slabs. And then you will be able to generate you know, public spaces because, and then in these connections, so, oh, very strange. Okay. Down here, there will be, a, a, some, they, they, uh, according to the density, a lot of commercial, small-scale commercial areas. Up here, a little bit administration, and you know who, what we will, what the, the, the third floor will be used for. Even in a, in a communist country, there are even more poor people than the poor people. <laughs> so the, 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 I would say the, in, in German, we would say the. A groups, which means immigrants coming from Ireland, they have to live in the East West. 
but there's only, you really have, and I can tell you, as soon as some of the guys there will earn money, we will move on. That's the worst. I, I, I don't want to explain to you why this South orientation is so important, you know, but that's uh, what it is. And that's also something very Chinese. I don't know if you see, that's a shopping mall. That's a shopping mall in this area. And you see, there are one, you see, over here two, and then over here there's the second district. And then the shopping mall is underground, three levels. You see, there's a small hill in the, to the center. And the park continues, because the park is uh, the most valuable piece. And you see, that's very funny you know, to see something like this. But that's a shopping mall. And you, you can imagine somewhere apart, then you, you drive down with all the trucks, and you do the unloading and the loading. And all there. It's very strange. But that's how Chinese try. They like parks. Nature, they have this idea of nature. But at the same time, you know, they have, they lost somehow their history in their cities. And at the moment, they don't know how they do cities anymore. And therefore, they focus so much on this kind of park. You know. uh, it's, uh, I don't know if you know, but it's a, uh, China is the only country in the world, which I know, which still doing bomb shelters for every Chinese. Under every building, there are bomb shelters of a dimension you would not believe. So their, their political goal at the moment is very clear. They think there will be war in this country. So every Chinese has to have a place in the bomb shelter. And you would not believe what happens underground in China. <laughs> when you ever go there. You will not allow to be go there because uh, uh, but okay, I, I, I know the importance of the show. Mm -hmm. it's, it's impossible to take images, but it's really an old world. Okay, but that's the same, it's almost the same problem, you know. How can you, uh, so the public over there in this culture is something very different than what the public in our European tradition is. You know? Uh, but it's it's okay. I only really want to show you. Yeah, that's what. We Half of the development is already constructed. That's what. We, so so we try to develop these public spaces, but it's mainly for walking. In fact, it is Okay, that's what I wanted to tell you. So I only wanted to show. What's the main idea for every project? How to organize the public? And what does public mean in relation to this project? It's almost the same. It doesn't matter. And what can you, through the building, contribute? Okay, that's it. Do you have any questions? Questions? Uh, related to uh, those in China. Uh, Sorry? Uh, related to those this development in China where you have like those kind of uh, south uh, long buildings and then you fulfill the rest with the uh, three floors. Uh, did you think or did you uh, know some example of uh, how to fulfill the all the modern developments? Yeah, I would like this. They have no spaces. That's a big problem of Chinese modern development. Because they are determined by buildings or Maybe you, you know images of Pudong or Shanghai or something like this. But you should know that uh, in these in, uh, images you see a lot of big building mass of high range buildings. That's very fine, but uh, maybe you should know that 80% uh, of this building is not used. It's the, the, in their mind, building is something very different than in our mind. I, I only can tell it like this, you know, but uh, that's what we Europeans never understand. But the, the, even the government of China, the, the official number is at the top. They have a built building volume 
for about 200 million people, which is not used. And you will ask yourself, why do they do something that's stupid? For us, you will feel very stupid. Now, for Chinese, it's different. You know, in Chinese culture, they, they, there are two ideas which are very different than we have. When you speak to an American and introduce to the American introduce to you what yeah, I told you. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what, what you know, I, I told you I said, the story yeah. about and, and you know so the family and the class is something very and at the same time Chinese culture is the only culture who never brought up any idea about life after death. So when you die, it's finished. So if you want to develop as a person your importance, you have to, 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 to bring something to your clan, to your family, which will survive you as a person. And, while, and you know Chinese don't trust their government, like Spain. They don't trust their banks. Maybe also my experience, I don't know. No, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. And therefore, they put everything they can in real estate. And therefore, for them, the real estate is not something to earn money with, but to show their importance for their families, for their generation, for the next generations. That's something one of the few one of the few uh, possibilities that Chinese have to live a little bit longer in the minds of other people. Mm -hmm. And that's why they do this. You, you, in the beginning, when the, a Chinese never will tell you this like this. You know. <laughs> and also very clear, you know, he will never tell you this. You know. But that's really going on in their minds. How can I survive? I know I will die. But when I leave something for my family, for my clan, then I will stay in their minds. And that's what they will do. Yeah. Therefore, they are not interested if they look at, you know, real estate business in Europe is something very simple. It's 4% or 3% or 2% it doesn't matter. But in China, they don't care if it's 0% because they have much more other opportunities to invest money where they earn much more. So they don't invest uh, money in real estate to earn a lot of No, they want to do something for their, for their lives. Very strange. Very strange. And therefore, the, 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 this number of the 200 million people capacity you know, is the official number of the Chinese government, so it's nothing. You know, you can believe it. Somewhere there it will be. It's not important if it's a little bit higher or lower, but somewhere there it will be. You know? And that's a little bit, uh, yes, what I. Uh, and therefore, you, you see this. Uh, have a, a very careful look when you, when you speak. Look, first of all, you see images. But that's the same in, in Europe. You know? When you see an image of Barcelona, what do you see? You see Bajo Gotico in Sanche at the sea. What do you not see? You don't see where the majority of people is living in the periphery. And that's in China exactly the same. You know? So you see Pudong, that's the modern district. But this is, you understand? This, this has no importance you know, in relation to property. And the reality for the majority of the people is very different. Very, very different. But that's the same. The majority for the people in Barcelona, for the majority is also very different than the images you see uh, in internet or you see uh, in uh, advertisement. It's not a very different. Nice One more question. I'm just curious. Which one was choose? The Chinese oh, big buildings or the small wooden houses? No, I like the big buildings. No, I like the big buildings. Oh, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's your building. No, oh, no, I like totally Chinese. I like. Look, I tell you why. Because 
I'm working a lot, and, and I have a lot of relation to other people during every working day. You know. So sometimes I, I really want to to be alone. I mean, a big room, you are much more alone than in this room. So and that's the way. I want to stay alone. I want to stay alone. So that's the reason why. I Nevertheless, they have to have a certain level of quality. <laughs> 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 that's you understand. No, but I like the big people. But this is, this is a very personal, uh, you know, for a lot of people, uh, and, and this is a, a generation which is much more related to your generation, the work will be project-oriented, you know, and there the interaction with other people will become much more important. Then I think uh, this kind of models of housing, where there is by nature a higher intervention between people, you know, becomes more, for a lot of people, becomes much more useful. And uh, the other hand is also that this, that in this kind of groups, uh, you know, or not to, not to, if the groups are too big, it's bad. But in the small group, you can organize a lot of things, you know, which makes your life more comfortable. When you have children, other people have a look, take care about the children. Even when the mother is not here, or, you understand? Or, or you, other people go shopping for you. You know, they, they go shopping anyway. So the baby. But, but you know, so it's every, every, all of these different kinds of life, they have very different uh, advantages and disadvantages. And, uh, that's uh, something which is very, yeah, more questions? I have one observation. Um, when you show, was it in its, in its group, the, the development for the IKEA node? Uh, was it in its group, the development for the IKEA? No, not yet. No. No, no this is ongoing process. Okay. But what I mean is, when you deal with these kind of situation, where you have the urban sprawl, and usually people like to use the car. Um, basically what you're doing is dealing a lot with the mobility because you're removing these parking, mm -hmm. yeah. and you change that. So yeah. how do you provide, uh, because you were telling us the other day that in Zurich, for example, um, when you make new buildings in downtown, you uh, reduce the amount of parking on yes. the ground. Yes. Uh, with the idea to intensify the... No, so I, I can tell you... Uh, <coughs> that in these places? Look, look first of all, in, in this development, you cannot determine the behavior of individual yeah. people who live outside. But you, and that's the same in housing, that you can never determine through architecture the behavior of other people. What you can do, you give them opportunities. You open options. And the more attractive other options are, Look, for example, not all the people like to drive cars anymore. Mm -hmm. a, a, a quite vast growing uh, part of the population, the, the, the driving by car is an obstacle because they lose a lot of time, especially for families, you know, to bring their children to, it doesn't matter, depending what they do, you know, and so, uh, th that's what we see at the moment according to the changing of the dimension of households and things like this as we the purpose of More and more people are interested in urban situations to live when they can combine on one hand to have access to all the infrastructure, to all the necessities of everyday life and as a third on another level have some kind of big view or a nice garden, or a nice, it doesn't matter, you know, outside space. You know? and, and that's exactly what the typologies uh, for the future, I think, have to combine. How can we combine high densities with a short access by walking mm -hmm. to all the everyday infrastructure that we like, and on the other hand, give a certain kind of feeling of being independent, having a relation to nature, having a view to the outside, and things like this. And there we have to see that a lot of these models for big developments, what we were used to in social housing now during the last 30, 40 years, they fail. 
they're only stupid. The people, when, when they can afford, they move out. Because we were only thinking about the apartment, or a little, uh, not a, but look, I, I know so many developments, not in Barcelona, but around Madrid, no? And I would say 98% of them are missed investments. Uh, and I'm very happy that the biggest developer of Madrid housing, in the AMS, got bankrupt. Yes. I talked to them two <laughs> or three times, and they were so stupid, and they were so self, they, they, they don't understand anything, but they were so proud about themselves, you know, and it, <coughs> I'm happy. <laughs> no, because if people behave, you know, if they are following the wrong ideas, I think at a certain moment it's natural that they get bankrupt, you know. Uh, and you know, and it's not about doing a nice building with a nice art. You know, this does not say this is not questions you have to deal with. Sure, you have to do nice building, but this does not solve the much more basic questions. You know? And I don't. I only speak about Madrid. I don't. Oh, well, I can speak about Germany, Austria, Switzerland. Switzerland. I, I can speak about some countries, but not Russia. Okay. No, no, they, they, they were doing the wrong things, believing into the wrong goals, and then it was finished. When you have a look at these developments, you get crazy. I always, when, I, when, I've been teach, when I'm teaching, and I always do a nice story with me. in Karamanche. Yeah, I know. I, 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 I know some other areas also. I always say to students, oh, we should do some housing here. The only thing which is forbidden is to have a plot. Because there is so st much stupid public space, so only build on public. You're only allowed to build on public space. Because there's so much... <laughs> and for example, I could you know, a very funny project. You know? But that's another discussion. You know? But there you have the same problem as we have in it. The wrong development. And then, let's, let's make a city, a nice city out of it. Therefore, you have to touch the power. I know in political terms, very incorrect, you know. In the terms of regulation, very incorrect, you know. But nevertheless, you know, it's not serious. Not serious. And it doesn't matter to me. It's a lot. Of but that's what happened. You know, therefore, I say you should be very happy as a young generation. You learn something. We did everything wrong. So make it better. <laughs> you can correct our mistakes. Correct our mistakes. Huh? No, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, that's the way. No, yeah. that is correct mistakes make by others. <laughs> okay, if you don't mind, we do a short break. Okay, in 15 minutes at 4 o'clock.